All right, time to finish up these boards. What do you say? Let's go. When we're creating, there's a reason behind it. Oftentimes there's a CTA or a call to action that we want the viewer to take. And oftentimes that comes at the end or at the resolution of your piece. For our piece here, all of our boards have led to our stats reveal, which is our hero element. This is what we've been building towards in our first three boards. This is gonna be our last board here in Photoshop before we take all of this and port it over to After Effects. So let's get to it. We are going to steal from the artboard before, like we have done many times before. And I'm going to steal this pink rectangle And in the rectangle, I'm going to scale this up a little bit. And this is where I'm going to call up my rulers again. So I want my stats text to be flush here on the left side of this ruler and my number to be flush on the right side of this ruler. So let's make sure that I get my square centered here. So I'm going to just hold Alt and Shift just to bring it out a touch more, just to give it a little bit more room on the outside here and we can always obviously revisit this and pink is not the color that we want here we want this to be our dark blue great and let's go ahead and back to artboard one and click that alt and drag my background up here so let's call this stats background and I haven't been as good at naming as I should have been um, and the background itself is going to be pink. Let's save. And then my text is going to be this light blue color. So let's go ahead and start adding some stats. So make sure that we start with the right color and pull up our guide again. And let's zoom in here. Hit spacebar to bring up the hand. Great. So we want this to say points. And I'm just going to do these all on separate layers so that I have full control. I kind of want these to fall right in the middle, height wise, right in the middle of this box. And that's going to be a little bit big because I need a number over here too. So let's go ahead and make this uh, 36. All right, let's do that. All right, Alt, click and drag, hold shift so it constrains. And assist. And then we're also going to add rebounds. Great. And you can see I need to adjust a little bit of my kerning. And what I mean by that is the space between here and here is just slightly different. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option and hit my left arrow key to close that gap. Same with the Assist. This gap is a little bit bigger. And then with my Rebounds, over one. And that looks about right. I'm just looking for uniformity here. Make sure that the space here is kind of consistent with that T or about as close as I can get them to be. So that looks pretty good to me. And now I need the numbers. So I'm just going to reorder because I want them to appear as they appear here. And if I turn off my guide layer, I'm feeling like the text is a little small. So let's turn the guide layer back on, zoom back in. And it's good to, you know, look at these from different vantage points. Make sure that you're doing everything you can. So let's make these 42. I went with 36 because it was divisible by 12. Um, so I'm just using half of 12 to add to this here so that my numbers can remain consistent. 
All right, so let's make sure I'm kind of halfway between here. Okay, cool. All right, that definitely looks better. Make sure it looks better at that size too. All right. All right, so if I alt drag on points, and you can see my paragraph is left justified here. So if I double click and make it right justified and change it to 35, pull up my guide again to make sure I am flush with the right side here. So we're there and I'm gonna leave a little bit of an overhang here too. 35. So let's Drag this down, and I want to make sure it lines up here. Perfect. And then rebounds. Again, we're just going to make sure that this all syncs up. And let's leave that 12 and make assist 10. How about that? Cool. Triple double. Big day for Candace Parker. All right. So. The next thing that I want to do is also add her photo here. So let's go ahead and alt click and drag up here and we can turn off this overlay. So just click the eyeball there and I'm going to command T and we're going to hold op option and or alt and shift and we're going to make her super large because what, what we're going to do is just put her in the background and we can turn on a multiply here to really put her in the background. And the other thing I'm going to do is also add a levels. And this is really going to um, push her even further into the background. But what I want to do first is I want to constrain what I do with this levels. I don't want what I do with this levels to impact what you see on anything but her photo. So if I hold alter option, you can see that this box and arrow is over her picture and that's just going to keep it so that the levels only affects the photo. So let's go ahead and just crunch this down and crush. Crush it here and her image. Maybe I don't want it to be. All right, let's go with overlay. And I also don't want this to be showing up very much. So let's try three. I just want it to be a hint. And I can update this. Let's push this even further. I just want her to be a little bit of a hint in the background here. Let's try 10 again. Yeah, just enough so that you can see that she's back there, but not enough to distract you because the hero needs to be her points, assists, rebounds, her stats for the game. And the image of her is really just supporting documentation if you want to think about it that way. So if I scale her up a little bit more, a little bit too much, and just kind of put her eyes right in the center of the comp there. Yeah, I like like having her eye hit that part. All right, maybe she can come back up just a touch. Let's go 12, why not? Cool. All right, feel pretty good about that. So now let's just take a step back and look at what we have right now and we are going to make this loop so the background of her stats end up becoming the background of the court in the first artboard here so you can see how all this goes from or from board to board to board and then we need to make this board turn back into the basketball tip off so that it loops and makes it a little bit more engaging for people to consume. And that, my friends, is a basic overview of how to create boards in Photoshop. Now our job is to take these boards, import them into After Effects, and start to make things move and make them feel 
really good.